Well, in a moment, we're going to uh, get the thoughts of our political editor, Beth Rigby, who's in Westminster. First, though, let's go to our economics editor, uh, Ed Conway. Well, Ed, uh, what do you make of it? Well, it was, it was slightly bigger, I think, than many people had expected. You had a lot of different measures, and you've kind of run through a lot of them there. Some people thought there might be a VAT cut temporarily. Some people thought there might be a stamp duty cut. Other people were, were talking about the idea of vouchers. Uh, in the event, we got all three of them, uh, plus extra measures as well. It's worth just remembering, and this was something the Chancellor kind of you know, emphasized a number of times, you know, this is part two of a, of a three-act saga that we're having over the course of this year. The first part was all those emergency measures we had when lockdown was imposed. Now what we're getting are measures to try to ensure that basically the UK can start to come off some of that emergency medicine. So you had the schemes to ensure that companies don't necessarily lay off people when they come back off the furlough scheme. You've seen something similar to that in the US, now we have it in the UK. So that's the, the bonus, the job retention bonus. Uh, and you've got measures to try to ensure that people carry on spending, uh, particularly in restaurants. So you had the VAT cut, that's very big uh, indeed. In fact, we can probably have a look at some of these costings because they have released a table uh, with some costings. The VAT cut actually uh, cost 4.1 billion. But what you can probably see there is the bit that I've circled. That's the eat out to help out discount. Now, that is going to attract a lot, a lot of attention, isn't it? You know, the, this new voucher whereby you can get money off uh, when you go out to eat. It's up to a discount, as you can see at the bottom there, of £10 ahead. But it doesn't cost much. Actually, that's the least significant of all of the measures that we've heard about today. Half a billion pounds compared with over four billion pounds when it comes uh, to restaurants. Uh, VAT being cut temporarily just above it. And look at the bottom, just, a, just, just above the total stamp duty. £3.8 billion pounds, uh, to cut stamp duty. Now, that is a very big cut indeed. And some people might ask whether that's consistent with the rest of this package. It was supposed to be a package about jobs. Certainly, that will help with some of the jobs. But there is speculation as well that really the stamp duty holiday is what Number 10 wanted most of all. The Treasury wasn't entirely keen on it, but Number 10 have got their way. There's a stamp duty holiday that goes in there. That will certainly help people who want to buy at the moment, although in practice, in practice, stamp duty holidays like this, stamp duty cuts like this, tend to benefit the home seller rather than the buyer, as, as, as counterfactual as that might sound. It tends to be the buyers, middle class homeowners who benefit most from these policies. But nonetheless, look across there, and you're talking about up to £30 billion. Pounds. It might, it's unlikely to get up to £30 billion. Pounds. It depends on how many people come back from work from the furlough scheme and how big that bonus scheme uh, costs. But as I say, this is stage two, act two, whatever you want to call it, and we're going to get act three in the autumn. That might well be even bigger, because that's when we get a spending review, get more detail on where the government wants to spend extra cash. We get more detail uh, on what kind of measures it's going to put in place permanently as opposed to the temporary stuff that we've heard about today. But nonetheless, it was more than a lot of people expected and a lot of measures there to try to ease the difficulties of coming off uh, this extreme form of economic medicine that the country's on at the moment. Ed, thank you. Uh, Beth, the Chancellor described his plan for jobs as unencumbered by dogma. So what's the politics? Well, Adam, it's a Chancellor, really, that likes to under promise ahead of the statement and then over deliver if you like in terms of what he announced it was definitely more uh, than people were expecting the government has been under huge pressure uh, to extend the furlough scheme beyond october at least for some sectors that was labor's big policy and so what did he do well he pulled a rabbit out of the hat in terms of what we weren't necessarily expecting which was this plan the job retention bonus uh, and what that's designed to do is to encourage firms to keep on staff through november to january a thousand pound bonus uh, if they do that now there's nine million uh, people uh, the government saying it could cost them up to 9.4 billion if they do that, uh, whether they get to that level is a completely different matter. But it was definitely uh, designed to take the wind out of Labour's sails and designed to reinforce this sentiment that it's not jobs, jobs, jobs uh, that is Labour's policy, but it is actually the government policy. And that's exactly uh, what Mr Sunak uh, was doing. But in terms of uh, the bigger politics for the party, certainly what they wanted was the Chancellor to inject confidence here 
year to get people spending. What are the party looking for? What's the government looking for? They're looking for a V-shaped recovery. And in the next few months, the chance will be desperate for the economy to bounce back. And you know why, by what he said at the beginning of that statement. Let's just remember, he said, uh, hardship lies ahead, no one left without hope. But the IMF says this is going to be the deepest global recession since records began. And, and Sunuk, just to put uh, the scale of the task into one sentence, said, you know, in two months, the economy has contracted by 25 percentage points. That's the same it grew in 18 years. That is the scale of his challenge. They wanted to project confidence how did the opposition react? Well, as one senior uh, opposition minister said to me, the jobs retention scheme by far was the biggest measure uh, and that there is some good in this package, but gaps remain. Uh, what about aerospace, automotive sectors, uh, key manufacturing? What about companies that can't uh, bring back staff from furlough because they're still not up and running? The arts sector a big package. What about the beauty uh, industry? Uh, what about uh, nightclubs, for example? So there's still areas uh, where opposition politicians would say are being left behind. And then others like the SNP said, well, look at Germany. Angela Merkel's stimulus package to rebuild the German economy was 130 billion euros against up to 30 billion pounds that the government are announcing now. But what Rishi Sunak is doing is he's buying time to try and get the economy to bounce back to as ed was pointing out in october uh, sorry in the autumn to actually build the proper budget the big fiscal package of big tax and spending decisions so this is a stopgap if you like to try and fuel demand and bounce the economy back or at least begin to try and grow it as the government looks to see what the scale of the damage really is going to be